Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Melissa, and if you're new here, welcome. If you are returning, welcome back. I know that I have not uploaded in a couple of months, I believe. I think it's been a couple of months that I have not uploaded a video. I had just been going through a lot personally, and I just needed to take a break and just take care of my mental health and myself. Uh, if you um, are new, I did a video, I think I did a video, of... Um, that I suffer from depression and anxiety and it's just so much going on in my life right now that I'm trying to just trying to focus um my daughter is starting school she's about to be in first grade and it's just like I'm scared to death for her to go back so that's just got me um got my anxiety to off the roof um and I just wanted to take a break I didn't miss y'all a lot I didn't even like to be honest with you I didn't even like I wanted to research new stories to add to my notebook, but I really wasn't, I was just not into it, guys. It's just, I really wasn't, and I miss, miss, miss uploading. Um, I was not going to upload today, but I decided to do it. So, yeah, um, if I, I'm always here on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and on Sundays. I talk about true crime and missing children. And on Sundays, I did, on Fridays, I dedicated to Missing Children. And then on Sunday, I dedicated to um, Unsolved Jane or John Doe's. And then Mondays and Wednesdays, I just talk about different true crimes. So today, I'll be talking about a serial, serial killer, which I have not done in a while. Um, so yeah, if y'all are interested in any of that, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell. So you can be notified every time I upload. And um, I'm just going to let y'all know, like, if I ever go out when y'all don't see me upload in a while is because there's times that I will need to take care of myself. Like I said, I do have depression, I have anxiety, and everything else going on in my life. I just need to take some, there's just times that I need to take a time for myself and to fix myself. So yeah, so today we're going to be talking about Carl Pensframe. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but yeah, let's go ahead and get, ahead and get started. Carl was born into a large family in the East Grand Fox of Minnesota. Carl was the son of the Eastern Persian immigrants, John um, per Persermo. I don't know how to say his name, guys. Yeah, if y'all been here since day one, y'all know my English is not good, but yeah. And Martha Elizabeth, um, she was called Liz. Um, he was raised in his family farm with eight siblings, where they were forced to work from a young age until transiency laws which made it illegal for parents to not send their children to school came into effect. Pons and parents were not happy to be losing their children to school during the day and forced them to work in the fields throughout the night instead. Pons and later report he would get just two hours of sleep before he would have to get up for school. Punishment in the home ranged from being chained from being starved. Um, Carl reflected on his early childhood with the stemming that he was not likely by other children by the age of five or six he was a liar and a thief and he recalled that he became meaner to the older the older he grew carl runs ends with the law started in early of nine in 1899 at the age of eight he was charged in juvenile court with being drunk and disorderly and in 1903 at age 11 he was arrested in jail for being drunk and convertible term use when detained youth not long after the second arrest, he stole some cake, apples, and revival from a neighbor home in October of that year. His, par his parents sent him to Minnesota State Training School, properly a reform school, according to his autobiography. However, whether he was repeatedly beaten, tortured, and raped by staff members, and what the children dubbed the paint shop due to leaving the room painted with bruises and blood. Carl hated the school so much that he decided to burned it down and did so successfully without detention on July 7th of 1905. A side note, I know that there, I don't know now if somebody leave me in the comments, but how was this allowed back then? Like where was the, where were the, the adult in this situation? Like you're have you're beating a child, you are mistreating a child that had has a had a hard life already outside his own life and you you put him in a life where he's 
where he's when it where it gets worse. I'm not saying that his crimes are called for because it's not. I've seen a lot of I have followed a lot of YouTubers um in the true community and I think I agree with them. We all had a hard life, but that does not make us go out and kill innocent people, if that makes any sense. But why was this allowed back then? Is it still allowed today? Because I don't think it is. I don't think it is. That I know of. In January um, 2006, uh, Carl was paroled from Red Wink Training School where he had been detained after stealing money from his mother pocketbook. By his teens, he had become an alcoholic and was repeatedly in trouble with the authorities, mostly for burglary and theft. At age 14, a couple of weeks after his parole and two weeks after tending to kill a looting clear with a revival, Carl ran away from home and became a hobo. He often traveled via train cars and later recalled having been gang raped by a group of hobos on one of these occasions. So now we're going to go to his crimes. So Carl claimed that after skipping escaping from Montana State Reformary School along with an inmate named Jimmy. Both were involved in a string of burglaries, robberies, and arson throughout the Midwest until they split up in uh, 1907 at the age of 15. After getting drunk in Montana's salon, Carl enlisted in the United States Army, assisting to the 6th Inferini at the Fort William Henry Harrison, uh, and subretained and refusing to take orders shortly there before he was convicted of legacy for stealing eight eighty dollars worth of supplies and served prison sentence from april 20th to 1908 to 1910 in the united states disciplinary bakers of fourth Levorth usa security award william harford death um approved the sentence Carl cl later claimed that he that while he had been in rock and egg before imprisonment, that afterward any goodness left in him was smashed out during his left work in punish imprisonment. After his release and dis in order discharge, Carl resumed his career as a thief, stealing items that ranged from bicycles to ash. He was caught in imprisonment multiple times. He served prison sentence both under his own name and various islands in Franklin, California, Rusco, Texas, the Dallas, Oregon, Harrison, Idaho, uh, Bauman. Sorry, guys, if y'all hear noises, that's my daughter. Janelle. Um, Idaho, but but Budum, Montana, Montana State Prison as Jeff. Um, Jefferson Rose, Oregon State Prison, Bridgeport, Connecticut. Um, Sing Sang Coronational Faculty, New York, Clinton Coronational Faculty, New York, and Washington, D.C. Like, he was just everywhere. Like, he he was just everywhere. Leavenworth, Kansas, while in, in, in Sacred, um, Carl frankly attacked officers and refused to follow their orders. The officer related, suggesting him to the beatings and other punishment. In his um, autobiography, um, Carl wrote that he was rage per personif personify and that he would often rape men whom he had robbed. He was noted for his large statue and great physical strength due to years of hard labor at Leavenworth and other prison, which aided him in overpowering most men that he, he attempted to. He also engaged in vandalism and arson by his own omission. One of the few things he did not engage in criminal activities was he was employed as a strike baker against unit employees. On one occasion, he tried to sign aboard to a ship start in an army transported vessel but was discharged when he reported to work intoxicated. Carl claimed in, in his 1929 autobiography that after serving a short sentence at Rocks, Texas, he went to Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, Mexico in the winter of 1910 to try enlist in the Federal Mexican Army. He took a train to Del Rio, Texas and got off on a small town 50 to 100 miles east of El Paso. He later claimed to have abducted, assaulted, and strangled a man about a mile from town and then installed 
$35, which today um, is um, worth uh, $5.66 uh, in USA. Um, that's how much it was worth today from the victim. In the summer of 1911, um, cars were going by the alias Jefferson Davis was arrested in Franco's California for stealing a bicycle. He was sentenced to six months in county jail but escaped, but escaped after 30, day, 30 days. He claimed that after his escape while riding on a train boxer in to California, he's disarmed an armed man he either called a railway detective or a railroad brakeman who then forced to rape a hobo at gunpoint and threw them off the train. In 1913, Carl, going by the alias Jack Allen, was arrested in the Dallas, Oregon for highway robbery, assault, and sodomy. He broke out of jail after two, three months while he was on the run. He used to alias Jeff, uh, Jeff Davis. He was arrested in Harris, Ohio, but again escaped from country county jail. He was arrested in Cono, Montana under the alias Jefferson Davis. And sent to one year in prison for burglary to serve to be served at the Montana State Prison. Um, I have a question. Where were these people at? Like the people that worked in the jail? That because he he was good at escaping. And my thing is like I don't want to ever understand why these people just keep like have y'all not just keep them in prison. I know they did not commit a high crime. That it was like small crimes, but keep them in prison. Because apparently they're not learning their lesson, especially him. He 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 gets out and goes back to what he was doing, and like he don't, he just no. Nah. On April twenty seventh of nineteen thirteen, Carl uses Jefferson Davis alias was admitted to the state prison at Deer Lodge, Montana. He escaped on November thirteen. Within a week, he was arrested for burglary, given his name as Jeff Rodos and Three Forks. He was in Sacred at Deer Lodge for an additional year. He was released on March 13th of 1915. On June 1st, Carl burglarized a house in Australia, Oregon, where he was soon arrested while attempting to sell some of the stolen items. Under the name Jeff Baldwin, he was sentenced to seven years in prison to be served at the Oregon State Penitentiary in Salma, where he was taken on June 24th. Warden Harry Martina believed in harsh treatment of inmates, including beating, acceleration, among other disciplinary measures. Later, Carl stated that he he swore he would never do this that seven years, and it defined the warden and all his officers to make me. Later that year, Carl helped fellow inmate Otto Hooker escape from prison while attempting to ev evade capture. Hooker killed Martino. This event marked Carl's first known involvement in a murder as, a, as um, a cat accessory before the fact. In his prison record, he falsely gave his age as 30 and his place of birth as Alabama. His only truthful statement was when he stayed his passion as the thief. I'm trying not to lie, but this is just... Um, Carl was disciplined several times while at Salma, including 61 days in solitary confinement, before escaping on September 8th of 19 of 8, September 18th of 1917 after two shots out in which he attempted to shoot Chief Deputy Sheriff Joseph Fum. He was captured and returned to prison on May 12th of 1918. He escaped again by swimming through the bars of his cell and caught a freighting train heading east. He began going by the name John O'Leary and shaved off his mustache to change his appearance. He would never return to the Northwest illegally. He ended up in New York City and got a semen identification card and sailed on the steamship James S. Winnie to Panama. There he tried to steal a small boat with the help of a drunk sailor who killed everyone on board and was arrested. Steel feet um, Carl traveled to Peru to work in a copper mine. After he traveled to Chile, Port Arthur, Texas, London, Ellsbury, Paris, and Ham Hamburger. This man was every... Like, he... Like, I have never heard of a man, like, escaping every prison that he he goes to. Like, I've never heard of that. That is... This is, like, the first time I ever heard that. I wonder how he did it. Like, I wonder how he really did it. Like, I really... Like, I just want to picture him. Like, him... I want to see him do it. I don't know why. In 1920, he committed a robbery in No Port Arlen Island. In August 1920, 
um, Carl Burgerlice, the William T. H. Taft men men mentioned in New Haven, Connecticut, a home of William um, Hart Taft, former president of the United States. Um, Carl believed Taft was responsible for his least worth imprisonment. He stole a large amount of jewelry and bonds, as well as theft Colt M. 1911, 45 caliber handgun. Carl took off a murder spree that spent eight years in multiple countries with the money stolen from Taft. He brought a, um, a, a cash? I don't even know what this is, guys, so I'm not even going to try it. Um, he lured sold soldiers away from New York City bars, got them drunk, raped them, and shot them with Taft's pistol, then dumped their bodies near exclusive rock light in Long Island Sound. He claimed to have killed 10 men. The soldier murder ended only after the accursed ran aground and sank near the Atlantic City, during which he last, his last two potential victims escaped to parts unknown. On October 26, 1920, Carl, using the Pescendum John O'Leary, was arrested in Stamford, Connecticut for burglary and possession of a load of handgun. In 1921, he served six months in jail in Bigport, Connecticut. Um, Carl caught a ship to yeah, Southern Africa and landed in London, the capital of clean Portuguese, Angola in 1920. Ponsum was fort, fort man of oil ring in Angola. He later burned it down out of what he he said was spitfulness. He later claimed that while in Angola, he raped and killed a boy estimated to be 11 years old. In his confession to this murder, he wrote, His brains were coming out of his ears when he when I left him, and he will never be any dater. Da dater? Is that even a word? He also claimed that he hired a boat for six words, shot the warriors with the larger pistol, and threw their bodies to the crocodiles. After his return to the United States, Carl uh, asserts he raped and killed two small boys, beating one to death with a rock on July 18th of 1922 in Salem, Massachusetts, and strangling the other later than that New Year Haven. After his murder spree in Salem, uh, Carl worked as a night watchman in New Yorkers, New York, north of Manhattan, at a Vicio Mealy factory in Providence. He stole a yard and sold New to Heaven, seeking victims to rob and rape and boast to steal. In June 1923, in New Orleans, New York, he stole a yacht belonging to the police of a new road show. He picked up a 15-year-old boy named George Walsing and promised him a job on the boat, but instead solemnized him. On June 27, the river near Kingston, New York, um, Carl claimed he, he used a 38 caliber pistol from the stolen yard to kill a man attempting to rob him on the yacht. Um, Carl threw the body into the river on June 28th. Carl and Wixon docked at Poughkeepsie, New York. Carl stole a thousand worth of fishing sets at Newport, New York. Um, Wilson, having witnessed the murder the day before, jumped overboard and sought to shore. He reported to the police at Yonkers that he had been sexually assaulted by Carl and alert went out for the captain, John Orley, on June 29th. John Orley was arrested in Neecott, New York. On July 9th, um, Carl tried to escape from jail. He later commit his lawyer by giving him an ownership of a stolen boat in return for bail money. Carl skipped bail and the boat was confiscated by the government agents on August 26th. Orley was arrested in Larmore, New York after breaking into a train depot. Three days later, on August 29th, Earl was cleared as a suspect in stabbing death of Dorothy Coffin of Greenberg, New York, committed a month prior. He was sentenced to five years imprisonment. While in county jail, he confessed to the alias Jeff Whitting, and he was wanted in Oregon in October. Carl was in imprisonment at Clinton Prison in Des Moines, New York. As an inmate 33379, he was discharged in July 1928. And he illegally committed a murder that summer in Baltimore, Maryland. What? I don't get it. Why would y'all let him out? Like, he committed... Well, you know what? He was... He was He was smart. Just... I'm gonna give him that. On August 
30th, 20, 1928, Carl was arrested in Baltimore of a Washington, D.C. burglary, stealing a radio and jewelry from the home of the dentist on August 20th. During his integration, he confessed to killing three young boys earlier this that month, one in Selma, one in Connecticut, a 14-year-old new boy in, Phil, in the Phillies, a car confession to killing a boy at Pair 28, Luggy Alley near Philly in August of 1928 was confirmed. Boston police were unable to corroborate his other confession, the murder of a boy in Charleston, Massachusetts. Um, Carr later wrote that he had contempt mass murders and other acts of mis mismanagement such as a passionate city water supplies with the earnstake scarling british workship in new york harbor to provoke a war between the united states and britain guys so give me a second like my mouth i haven't done videos in so long so like i'm, I'm trying to get um back in the groove of it and I got just my little drink if y'all been here long um, I drink I drink coke that's how my to go coke I used to be a, when I was pregnant with my daughter that was my to go and that was my to go a snack um, and hot Cheetos, but now my to go snacks. Lemon. These are like my favorite. Okay, back to the story, y'all. In light of his extensive criminal record, Carl was sentenced to 25 years to life upon arriving at Lorthworth, Lord Lemworth Federal Penitentiary and defined as inmate 31614. He warned the warden, I'll kill the first man and that bothers me. He. Well. At least he was telling At least he said that. I mean, this man had anger. He had anger. I have never seen a. He. This man had anger. I hope he. I hope they didn't have him with other inmates. I hope he was by himself. He was assigned to work in prison in laundry room, where he, the Fortman robber rank was known to bully and harass other prisoner under him. Walk soon and. And Garnice um, Carr despised that later repeatedly warning him to back off on June 20 of 1929. I'm um, sorry. Carl beat Walking to death with an iron bar. He was convicted and sentenced to death. He refused to allow any appeals of his sentence and response to officer from death penalty appointments and human rights actives to invent, he wrote. The only thanks you and your kind will ever get from me for your efforts on my behalf is that I wish you all had one neck and that I had my hands on it. While on death row, Carl was befriended by an officer named Henry Phil Lester who would give him money to buy cigarettes. Carl was so admonished by his act of kindness that later Lesnar provide him with reading materials. Carr wrote a deadline summary of his crimes in Hitler's uh, psychology while awaiting execution. Carr respectfully denied having any rumors for any of his actions, denied having any remorse for any of his actions, and began his journal with the statement that I, in my lifetime, I have murdered 21 human beings. I have committed thousands of burglaries, robberies, lurchings, arson, and last but not least, I have committed sodomy and more than a thousand male human beings. For all these things, I am not in less a bit of sorry. Well, I don't know what to say. Carl was hanged on September, 5, September 5th of 1930 as officer attempted to place a customary blank black hood over his head he spot in the excursion face when asked for any last word he spot yes hurry up you horseshoe bastard i could kill a dozen men while you screwing screwing around he was buried in the liberation penitentiary where his grave is marked only with his prison number Um, in 1938 carl minnie wrote men against himself he included material about Carl referring him him to to him as a using the pen name of John Smith and defined him as prisoner. 
uh, former prison guard Henry Luzer per Sanf Carl Laters in the biography manuscript. He spent the next four decades trying to have his material published. In 1980, Lenstrom donated uh, Carl's materials to San Diego State University, where they are housed as a Carl prints and papers in the Malcolm A. Love Library. And that is the sad, sad story of a animal named Carl. An animal that thought it was so funny to just do wrong in this world. And the fact that he didn't have any remorse is the sad part. But here's the thing that I ha- I, I feel like every time I hear these stories and the more I read these stories makes me mad because they used their childhood as an excuse of why they committed the crime they committed. I'm sorry. Like I said before, and I'm going to say it in every case, do not sit here and use the way you were raised as an excuse to come and kill innocent people that had nothing to do with your life. We all were raised differently. Some of us were raised in the worst way possible. Okay? Some of us didn't have our parents there because they had to make sure to work so they could feed us and give us clothing and and give us a roof in our head okay i'm not not every child i'm we we grew up different we you know every child grows up different some grow up in a really bad house you know some have parents that that are alcoholics or do drugs or just don't even care that they have kids but some of these kids grow up and say you know what i'm gonna change I'm going to be a different person. I'm not going to be like my parents. You know, I want to have a better life. I want to have kids. I want to treat my kids the way my parents did not treat me. So it pisses me off when these serial killers blame their childhood and make it seem like because of their childhood and because of the way they were raised and because their parents didn't love them or, you know, whatever the case may be. They grow up and become serial killers and take lives of innocent people. You may not agree with what I'm saying, but that to me, it's not, you can't, no, you can. You, you cannot sit here and make that an excuse. That's not an excuse because... When you got to a certain age and you realized what type of living you were living in, you could have changed it. You could have made a change. You could have said, hey, you know, I'm an adult now. I'm fixing to go to school. You know, I'm fixing to change. I'm not going to be like my parents. I'm, You know? But no. Y'all go and commit crimes, kill innocent people, mistreat innocent people. And when they ask you why... Oh, well, my childhood was bad. No, that's not an excuse. These innocent lives that you took away, they had nothing to do with the way that you were raised. Nothing to do with the way you were raised. You were raised the way... I'm not saying that the way you were raised was the right way. I'm not saying that. But you... Y'all need to stop. They just... I don't want to... I don't want to hear that excuse anymore. I don't know if everybody feels that way, but I personally do not want to hear that excuse. Because once you're at a certain age, you could change your the way you live. You could move out. You could go get a job. And make sure you don't make the same mistake that your parents made. And make something of yourself. And tell your parents, you know, oh, you may not have loved me. You may not have uh, this or that or that. But I'm going to prove you wrong. I'm going to do better than you. And and that's what I've... It, it, be honest with you, I, this whole situation would be a whole video. Because every serial killer is like this. 
they make excuses. When you ask them why they committed the murders that they committed, oh, because of my life, because of the way I was raised. But these innocent people, they have nothing to do with you. They didn't have nothing to do with how you were raised. They didn't even know you when you were, you know, when you were growing up. So I just think that that makes me kind of mad, and and I'm glad that he's not here, and I hope he is suffering wherever he he's at, um, because he deserves it. He really does. He deserves to to suffer, and it is. It's just, it's sad. It's really sad that these young men had to lose their lives by a person that should have stayed locked in prison for the. He should have never got got out. But yeah, guys, I'm so sorry about that. Um, I just, I would really would want to do a whole video on this situation and talk about it um my dream is to do uh um, i also want to start a a a, uh, a <laughs> i want to start um i don't even know but yeah um i will see y'all on wednesday with the new video guys thank you so much i appreciate it um one more thing i know this like this ending is very long if you suffer from depression or anxiety, just please, please know that I'm here. If you need anybody to talk to, I am the type of person that I like to be there for people. Even though if I'm going through my own personal problems, um, I love being here for people. Um, I love just listening to other people and letting them know that I am not, they're not alone. Because to be honest with you, I am alone. Um, I don't have nobody to speak to. I don't have nobody that understands me. Nobody supports me. Um, I do these videos because I feel like talking about these cases and making sure these innocent victims do not get forgotten. Um, I also, I'm a photographer. I have my business in photography. Um, so yeah, if you need anything, just you can leave me your um, Instagram handle or your facebook on the bottom and i will reach out to you i love talking to people i like helping people it's just one of my things um i'm the type of person that my whole life could be falling apart and if somebody needs me i will pause trying to figure out my life and be there for the person that needs me the most so yeah i will be here on wednesday with a new video guys and i'm so glad that i am back and hopefully i will i'm gonna try my best to keep myself uh, posting the days that I'm supposed to post. <laughs> Let's see how that goes. But yeah, guys, I will see ya.